The Wonderful Winter Tree, based on the original story by Disney Press, adapted and told by July Leonard, inspired by Daniel Wells' Base Cube 95 and the NPRRE2's Furry Railways Media, Flying Fox and Bambi's Flying Fox and Bambi series, and George Garza Productions' Collided Worlds and TBNF series. Bambi woke to find a fluffy white blanket of snow covering the whole world. Snow, snow is upon us, said his father, the great prince of the forest. Bambi walked in a circle and felt the cold snow crunch under his hooves and, as he made tracks round and round. I like snow, he, he said. S snow is pretty to look at. But winter can be hard, said the great prince, especially when we animals can find food. Just then, Thumper called to Bambi from a frozen pond. Hiya, Bambi. Why don't, why don't you come sliding like we did last time? Look, the water's stiff. Bambi nuzzled his father goodbye and pranced off to join his friend. Flower came over to see what was going on. You want to come skating? Bambi asked. The water's stiff. No thanks, said the skunk. I'm ready to settle down for a long winter nap. He... He called to a squirrel who stood in the hollow of his oak tree. The, the pond is sti stiff. Come sliding. Thanks, but I'm storing nuts for the long winter. The chipmunk was in his nest, and the bear was asleep in his cave. Bambi went to the pond alone, where he found Thumper whooping it up with his sisters. For Bambi, skating was not as much fun nor easy as it looked like the last time he went skating. After dozens of flops on the ice and getting back up a number of times, he finally got the hang of it. Eventually, he was both bruised and hungry, so Baby went off to find his father. But before he could leave, Feline stopped by. Hi, Bambi, she said. She could see Bambi all bruised and worn out. Are you all right? she asked. Yes, I'm fine, replied Bambi. Just a little bruised and hungry, that's all. I see, said Feline. Then you may want to find your father, she suggested. I'm sure he'll find something, find you something to eat. That's a good idea, replied Bambi. Thanks for the advice. Anytime, replied Feline. And with that, Bambi walked away to find the great prince. Father, I'm hungry, he said. He looked for a patch of grass, but it was covered all over. Today, we'll have to search for our dinner the great prince said. Following his father, Bambi poked through the snow until his nose would freeze. They finally uncovered a mound of greens. The great prince watched him over as he ate. Then they curled up in the thicket for a long nap. Their bodies huddled against the chilly air. Before falling asleep, Bambi turned towards the great prince. Winter... Winter... Winter sure is lawn, isn't it? Day after day, the animals spent most of their time in search for food. Bambi and his father, the great prince of the forest, often followed by Thumper, Flower, Feline, and Mena, scoured the forest, sometimes with little luck. Father, asked Bambi, is this why the birds fly south and when our other friends sleep through the winter? The great prince nodded. Yes, he said, and gently nuzzled him. The sun had set. It was almost time for sleep, but Bimby had found little to eat except some bitter bark. Then, at the edge of the valley, he, his father, the great prince of the forest, and his friends Feline, Thumper, Flower, and Mena came upon a wondrous sight. A tall snow-covered pine tree draped top to bottom with strings of berries and popcorn. 
From each branch hung a green ripe apple. Father! cried Bambi. Look! Slowly and cautiously, the great prince of the forest drew closer. Hmm. It seems too good to be true, he whispered. What is it, father? asked Bambi. The most beautiful tree I've ever seen, he said. He must have known. He must have known that this was your first Christmas, Bambi. Who, father, who? asked Bambi inquisitively. He was so hungry, he could almost taste the juicy apples. Santa Claus, explained Thumper. Santa Claus? said Bambi. Who's that? And what's a Christmas? The great prince Feline, Mena, Thumper, and Flower explained that Santa is a jolly, magical elf who visits just around the time of the first snowfall each year. They told Bambi all about how he delivers presents and holiday cheer and about his reindeer and sleigh. It was Santa who hung those it was Santa who hung those berries and apples, said Thumper, and put, the st and put the star on top, added Flower. After calling the good news to the other animals, the Bambi, the great prince of the forest, along with Thumper, Flower, Feline, and Mena, gathered to share the feast. As they ate, they noticed a bright star in the heavens, a star like the one on top the pine tree. And as it shone, a hush settled over the valley, the sound of silence of peace on earth. Just then, a whistle sounded. It was Bambi's friend Thomas who puffed in for a visit. Hello, Bambi, he said. I can tell that this is your very first Christmas in your forest. Bambi nodded and then explained how he, his father, and friends came across the pine tree of apples, berries, and popcorn. By the time he had finished, Thomas was amazed. Who would have thought that Santa would leave a tree for forest animals? He said. I have to go now. Goodbye, Bambi. And with that, Thomas puffed away, leaving Bambi by the pine tree. When he gazed at the star, Bambi felt warm inside, and his heart swelled with hope and that spring would soon arrive. Thank you.